Hi drivers, Paul Taylor here once again from Truckers Justice Center. I'm going to, uh, in this video, talk to you a little bit about how does the FMCSA get its powers to regulate truck safety? Where did it come from? Because lately on some of the discussion on our Facebook page, some people have said, where does the DOT get this? Where, where in the Constitution are they allowed to do this? What authorizes the federal government to regulate hours of service, to regulate truck safety? So the starting point is the Constitution of the United States. So there's a concept embodied in the Constitution of the United States that says all powers not expressly granted to Congress are reserved to the states and then to the people. Well, what is one of the express powers granted to Congress? Congress was granted in Article I, Section 8, Clause 3 of the Constitution, the power to regulate interstate commerce among the several states, originally 13, among the Indian tribes and among foreign nations. Well, commerce among several states includes transportation between certain states. So, how far that power goes was decided by the Supreme Court in an early case that I learned about in law school called uh, Gibbons versus Ogden, and that was an opinion by Chief Justice John Marshall. And in that case, what was challenged was New York granting an exclusive monopoly to Robert Fulton and his partners, Fulton of the Fulton Steamship Company, to operate certain um, steamships within the state of New York or crossing through the state of New York. Well, that was challenged in, and the U.S. Supreme Court, writing for the majority, Justice John Marshall said, no, it is the province of the Congress to regulate interstate commerce. Doesn't mean the states can't, but where the states conflict with the federal government the federal government regulation of interstate commerce carries the day. It trumps all others. So what happens is then as transportation gets developed beyond steamship lines, we have the railroads coming into being. After uh, the Civil War, primarily in 1887, Congress passes what's called the Act to Regulate Commerce, also known as the Interstate Commerce Act, which said essentially that railroads have to have reasonable rates, reasonable routes, reasonable rate practices, because in essence they were like a utility. You know, they controlled what grain uh, or coal, you know, rates were charged. Whether or not somebody like Pillsbury or General Mills gets a discounted rate, while somebody who goods flour travels a shorter distance may pay a higher rate. So after the railroads get entrenched with all this um, regulation from the 1887s up until the 1930s, the railroads are threatened with uh, competition from trucking. So as a result of railroad lobbying, Congress passes the Motor Carrier Act of 1935. The railroads wanted to be able to put their feet on the necks of trucking companies. So the Motor Carrier Act of 1935 is passed. And one of the things that the Motor Carrier Act of 1935 said and I'm quoting, it shall be the duty of the commission, referring to the Interstate Commerce Commission, to regulate common carriers by motor vehicle as provided in this part. And to that end, the commission, the Interstate Commerce Commission, may establish, establish reasonable requirements with respect to continuous and adequate service, transportation of baggage and express, records and reports, preservation of records, qualifications and maximum hours of service of employees and safety of operation and equipment. So 1935, Congress passes the Motor Carrier Act of 1935 and the very first regulation that came out in the decision called Ex Parte MC1 was the rule that put in the pre-trip regulation and it was called Interstate Commerce Commission Rule Number 8 and it basically read the same as 49 CFR 392.7, which is today's pre-trip regulation. So here's where the power comes to give you e-logs, to give you the 14-hour rule, to give you the annual DOT inspection, drug and alcohol testing. Where does this come from? It comes from the Constitution. 
which has been interpreted to grant Congress the exclusive right to regulate interstate commerce, at least the supreme right to regulate interstate commerce, voiding any state regulations that conflict. And Congress, in its infinite wisdom or lack of wisdom, regulated the railroads and then regulated the trucking companies and the Motor Care Act of 1935 specifically authorized the Interstate Commerce Commission to regulate truck safety. Those functions were transfer, uh, transferred to the Department of Transportation uh, in 1967 and that's how we got to where we are today. That is the authority that the FMCSA has. That is the source of the authority. Thanks for watching.